Okay. So let's go back to number one. State the restrictions. What you're supposed to know is that restrictions kind of mean what can X not be worth. That's a clue. Restriction means you can't do something. So restrictions for us in this case mean the denominator cannot be worth zero. Okay, so there's nothing about the numerator, just the denominator. So you take the denominators, you say 5x squared minus 10x, and you say it can't equal zero, not equal to zero. And then you solve it just like you would if it were an equal sign. Because it's a power, we factor, but look, I can factor out a 5 and an x. So that leaves x minus 2 cannot equal 0. Split it up. So 5x cannot equal 0, or x minus 2 cannot equal 0. Solve each one. This one says divide by 5, divide by 5. This one says add 2, add 2. So we get x cannot be 5 or it cannot be zero, excuse me, or X cannot be two, but we always put them together. Just like a solution, you put it into one answer. X cannot be zero or two. Those would be your restrictions on this problem. X can be every other number in the universe. And this is a viable, good fraction. It just can't be these two values because they would make the denominator zero when the world is. Okay. Is that okay for number one? Yeah, just a quick question. Sure. When we're writing our answers inside those fancy little brackets you make. Do we have no. to write X? Y yeah. See, the, uh, the fancy little brackets are for the solution. That's what X can be to solve a problem. Okay, this is what X cannot be. So these gotcha. don't go into those funny little things. This is what X can't be as opposed to what X should be or must be. Is that okay? okay? Yes, sir. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Is that okay for state the restrictions? And there is a question um, on the quiz next, next Thursday and on the chapter eight test. There it is, I guarantee it. There's gonna be a question to state the restrictions. It'll look something like that. All right, moving on to the next one. Okay, simplify. Remember, simplify and reduce kind of mean the same thing to us. Simplify, reduce. But the key to all of this was Factor, the mathematical F word, factor, 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 factor. So if we factor this, this gave people fits, but this would be three minus X and three plus X. It's a dose problem, a difference of two squares. So we just leave it as it looks, three minus X, three plus X. The bottom is a trinomial. So you can use your AC and actually it's a shortcut trinomial. So it should become um, X plus four, X minus three. I'll erase some of this because it's a mess. Okay. So the numerator, the numerator was a dose, difference of two squares. So it factors as three minus X, three plus X, okay? You can't switch it around just because you don't like it, okay? You can't change it to X minus three, X plus three. It doesn't work that way, okay? However, technically nothing reduces yet. The only thing that 
reduce or cancel out is if the factors are exactly the same. So in a very technical sense, nothing reduces. However, we pull out of thin air the trick we learned. It was the negative one trick. For subtraction only, if these two are the same but reversed, they will always cancel out to a negative one. I, I called it actually the negative one trick. It only works for a binomial, by means two, binomial, binomial, and only for a subtraction binomial. And they have to be reversed from each other. So when they do, okay, we say this and this cancel each other out, but they leave a negative one somewhere. And it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it directly in front and have three plus X over X plus four directly in front. You can put it in the numerator and distribute it. So if you put the negative sign up in the numerator, then you're saying everything in the numerator gets hit with a negative. So you'd have to distribute it to there, everybody. Okay, or, or, or you could put it in the denominator, but you have to distribute it through the denominator. So any one of those an answers would be fine for me. Um, I do believe mom accepts the negative in front. Did anybody try any uh, mom homework and try it? No, not yet? Okay. So that's the concept of reducing. In algebra, when you tell yourself, oh, I got to reduce this. Oh, I got to simplify it. Almost always, the first step is factor. Almost always, to reduce or simplify, you first factor. And this had an extra trick in there. It had the negative one trick. Where you stick the negative one is your business. That's mildly wrong, but oh well. All right, so I need to erase the board to make some room. So how about the restrictions? Are you guys okay with that? And how about the simplify and or reduce? Are you okay with that? Remember, you do not have to give me all three answers. You just pick one of them. But any one of those are technically correct. So any questions on number one or number two? I'm good for now. Okay. Then I need to erase to make room for down here, multiply, simplify, divide. So let's restate it. It was y squared over x plus one times, it was x squared plus two x plus one over x squared minus one divided by three y over x y minus x minus y, sorry. Okay, so here we go. Uh, again, multiply or divide. First step was factor. Factor everybody. But what about this division thing? What am I going to do? Flip it. Flip it. So you can you can factor and flip simultaneously. You don't have to show it as two separate steps unless it helps you. If you like, if you're the kind of uh, person who likes to do one step at a time, great. Okay, um, I want you to get it right. So here we go. Nothing factors here. So this will stay y squared over x plus one times, okay? Uh, the numerator becomes x plus one, x plus one. Again, you went off to your scratch paper. You did 
trinomial, you use the AC and grouping and all that other kind of crap. Actually, this used the shortcut. The denominator here was x minus one, x plus one. The denominator was a dose type of factoring. So we had trinomial factoring here, dose factoring here. We're going to flip this. The three y is going to be down and notice I took the three y and wrote it as three times y because that's what it means. The number, excuse me, the denominator is going to flip up. Okay, but how can I factor? Oh, they have a y in common, so I can factor out a y, and that leaves x minus one. Remember, there's that placeholder one there. When you factor everything out of something, it leaves a one back there. So you can check your work. All right, that's all my factoring. Any questions on factoring? I'm not done, not by a long shot, but any questions on my factoring? Okay. Uh, so who cancels? Well, a whole lot, okay. Remember this x plus one has implied parentheses around it. So this is a quantity. So this x plus one and this x plus one go. They cancel, top with bottom, always that. This x plus one and this x plus one go. Okay. Oh, look, an x minus one and an x minus one go. Anybody else? One y. One of the y's. These, e, now, I see these as on top of each other and they're easier to cancel, but you could have canceled this y with one of these y's. It doesn't matter as long as you cancel a y with a y. I don't care who you cancel them with. So I'm going to cancel this y and this y, they're gone. Okay, so put everybody back together. What do I have left on top? Y squared. What do I have on bottom? Three. That becomes my reduced answer. My, my, I've more. If for some strange reason, I multiply all this together, and then divided it all, if I did all that, and then figured out how to reduce it, this is the answer. I just shortcutted it. I didn't want to multiply those two together. That'd be a mess. So I just shortcutted my work by factoring, canceling, and that's my answer. Questions? I have one. I feel like I know the answer, but I want to ask it anyway. Um, okay. Can you still, um cancel out quantities if they were to be added together versus multiply no um I, I i'm not sure how the problem would even look to address what you're saying what do you like in between the different uh fractions if they were like oh, 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 if it had been an addition problem. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Oh, no, that is an awesome question. Suppose we had y squared over x plus 1 added with um, x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so I've taken this problem and I'm only worried about the first two as an example of what Carmen is saying, okay? His, the question is, can I cross cancel over an addition symbol? No. Can you cross cancel over a division symbol? No. The only time you can cross cancel is when it's all multiplication. Are there shortcuts that some people teach? Yeah, I'm not going to even go there. Okay, 
the rule of thumb is the only time you can ever cross cancel is if the, the problems are multiplying with each other, not subtracting, not adding, not dividing. So that was a really good question. And by the way, people are on the test are going to try and cross cancel those. Okay, you can't. Hang on. Mm. Oh, this was the next one. I'm sorry. Can I cross cancel these? Yes. Yes, because those are all multiplying and dividing. I'm cool. But I can't cross cancel these because they're adding. That kills all your cross canceling. That was a great question. Awesome question. Anybody Pardon? else? Anybody else? Can you just times the other side by x minus one on numerator and denominator, and then you'd be able to here? Yeah. Yeah. Then you'd be, and that's what I'm going to get to in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're ahead of me, and you're right. That that's the way to do it. Okay. But. What happens is people get lost in the middle of a test under pressure, whatever, and they go, oh, I can cancel those. No, you can't, because you can't cancel with a plus sign. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, in chapter 8.3 last night, I gave us a real quickie introduction. Am I recording? Please tell me I'm recording. Yes, I am. Okay. I gave us a brief. We wanted to add or subtract rational expressions. And because the word rational, the root word is ratio, which means fraction, we know from forever, as long as we've been in math, that to add or subtract fractions, we must have, the key is we must have the same denominator. That is the number one key. And that's at all levels of mathematics. Whether it was an arithmetic problem, whether it was an algebra problem or a calculus problem, if you're trying to add or subtract rational expressions, fractional expressions, you've got to have a common denominator. Gotcha. So, okay, let's finish this off, finish our notes uh, to do that. So to add or subtract, first we check for common denominator. Second, we either add or subtract the numerators. but we keep the common denominator. Okay. And third, we attempt to reduce our answer. Maybe, maybe not. And remember in algebra, reduce means factor. Okay, so last night I did a couple that all had the same denominator. So I'm going to jump right into the ugly stuff tonight. What if they don't have the same denominator? Okay, so again, this is our basic thing. When we're adding and subtracting, we have to have a common denominator. Notice this is for add and subtract. This is not for multiply divide. Very important. You and your mind have to segregate, separate these two ideas. Multiply and divide, you factor. Add and subtract, 
you get a common denominator. Okay, that's critical. Oops, okay. So here we go. Easiest example that I can come up with. Let's go back to arithmetic for a second. Suppose I had, well, kind of arithmetic, x plus one over five plus two x minus three over two. Let's say that's what I wanted to add together. Okay, x plus one over five, two x minus three over two. I want to add them. You can't. You can't add these as they are now. But what we do is the first of many, many tricks. We have to make the same denominator. So we say, oh, well, look, what if I multiplied this fraction by two over two? Okay. What if I multiplied this fraction by five over five? Okay, now I'm going to have a 10 in the denominator here and a 10 in the denominator there. So I have a, I will have a common denominator. A couple things before I finish this problem. Okay, first question, where in the hell did the two and the fives come from? Okay, the easiest way is to look at the other denominator, okay? So you go, oh, I had a five, ah, but this one had a two. So I just use it over here. This five, I use it over here. The other thing that's important that all math instructors make a big deal about is you have to multiply top and bottom by the same number, okay? Now here's the technicality. Because what is two over two actually worth? One. One. So you're changing its format. You're taking this thing, you're going to multiply it by one. It's going to look different, but it's going to be worth the same as the original because you actually only multiplied it by one. So when you multiply this, you get 2x plus two. When you multiply this, you get 10x minus 15. Okay, really important math theory by multiplying it by one. Okay, what you actually done is changed its form, but not its value. It looks different, but it's exactly the same as that. And more importantly, it has a common denominator. So that's the easiest game to start an addition or a subtraction problem is just use the other denominator. Take the first fraction and multiply it by that two and two. Take the second fraction and multiply it by five and five. That's the easiest way to get started. Warning, it doesn't always work. Uh, I'm going to get you there. But finish off this problem, I want to add. So in the top, I add like terms. So I have 12x and minus 13. And you keep the common denominator, which is 10. It turns out this does not reduce. So we're done. That's the answer. I'll try and pick up my, my speed as we go through more problems. But I wanted to discuss that. This is far and away the fastest, bestest, easiest way to add fractions. Just use the other denominator. Okay. I would like to erase these notes over here. Anybody, anybody? Or am I okay? All right. I don't hear anybody yelling at me. <clears throat> So 
What if I had something like seven uh, X over X minus two plus three over X plus five? Actually, let's move it over here. Seven X over X plus two plus three over, what did I have, X minus five? Is that what I had? I, I needed to move it over to make room for some of my work. Okay. So again, the fastest, bestest, easiest way to get started in general is to use the other denominator. So on the first fraction, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by X minus five. On the second fraction, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 2. Okay, so are you guys okay with how I use the other denominator to guide me? Okay, so now watch carefully. I'm going to show you how mathematicians are lazy. We have 7x squared minus 35x over x minus 5, x plus 2. We multiply the numerator, have to multiply that out, but we leave the denominator in factor form for a couple of good reasons, which I won't get into now. But get that, get that in your notes. We multiplied the numerator out but we didn't multiply the denominator, okay? Plus, this is gonna be three X plus six over the same thing, X minus five, X plus two. Again, same rule. You have to multiply out the numerator, but we're going to leave the denominator factor, unmultiplied, okay? Add like terms, Ugh. okay? So I, I think I have seven X squared minus 32 X plus six over X minus five X plus two. Question number one, are you guys okay with my numerator in my, this is my answer. This is my final answer. If it was possible, will we try to break that down? Yes, you would. And, and that's one reason why you leave this factored. So that if you could factor this, you see the easy canceling. Gotcha. Okay? Did you guys hear Vince's question? If it were possible to factor this numerator, should you? Yes. Okay. My advice to you is on a test. Okay. I would circle this. Write yourself a note. Come back. Reduce. Question mark. And I would go on to the next problem. Unless you can see that that factors easily, screw it. It's not worth your time. So I would circle it and write yourself a little note to say to come back to this one, okay, and see if it reduces, okay? Most of the time, not reducing something like this will cost you at worst one point. So let's say this was a five point problem. Okay, doing all this stuff, you and uh, six points if it reduced, then you'd only lose one point for reducing it or not reducing it. So, good question, good comment. So, is everybody okay with how I got my 7x squared minus 32x plus six? Everybody okay with that? And Vince's question, really good. Should we try to factor the numerator? Yes, you should. And that's why we leave the denominator in factored form so we can see if anybody cancels quickly. 
The other reason is, I may as well tell you this, I can look at this denominator, just look at it and tell you what the restrictions are. Can you guys, can you guys look at the denominator, do a little bit of math in your head and tell me what the restrictions are? Yes. What are they? Five and negative two. X cannot be five and cannot equal negative two. Maybe negative so, no, well, because it's X plus five. Yeah. So you, you say X minus five cannot equal zero. So when you add five to both sides, you get X cannot be five, positive five. Or look at it this way. What would you put in for X so that this was worth zero? What take away five is worth zero? Five. What plus two is worth zero? Negative two. Okay, a bunch of ways. But anyways, so I've just shown you the two main reasons. Vince's question is good because it helps you eventually possibly factor it. And by glancing at this, you can see what the restrictions are, if that's important to your question. It may not be, but it shows your restrictions. All right. Let's, you guys, try one. Um, okay, I don't want... Let's just try um, x plus 2 over x uh, minus 3 minus, be careful, 3x over x plus 5. Be very careful with that minus sign. So I'm going to pause um, right now. You guys try that problem. Be careful with the minus sign. Okay. Several things are tricky about this problem. First off, when you're, look where I'm pointing right now, when you're saying x plus five times x plus two, you're implying quantities. And we foiled those together. Now, one chapter, I think one time I showed you how to make a matrix out of this, x plus five, x plus two, we did it that way, we filled it in. Others of you said, okay, you'd rather just foil it together. It doesn't matter to me how you multiply them together as long as you get this, x squared plus seven x plus 10 over x plus five times x minus three. Okay, I don't care how you multiply these two together, as long as you get that answer, x squared plus 7x plus 10 over the denominator. Don't forget the denominator. Minus, this will become 3x squared minus 9x over x plus 5 times x minus 3. So pretty much, that's your first step. Multiply the two fractions by the other denominator. Multiply the two fractions by the other denominator. And then multiply out the numerators. So this is going back to our chapter five stuff. All right. Um, now, I'm not sure the best way to do the next step. This subtraction here screw students up big time because it means subtract all of this. So I'm going to show you with some extra steps, whether you personally need these extra steps is your business. Okay. You don't have to write them. You do have to be aware of them and think of them. So this problem becomes x squared 
plus 7x plus 10 minus the quantity 3x squared minus 9x over the common denominator x plus 5, x minus 3. When you subtract these together, okay, when you subtract these together, you're saying I'm going to subtract the quantity there, all of that. So the minus sign is going to distribute through this, this second fraction. The minus sign doesn't go to just the 3x squared. It goes to the 3x squared and to the minus 9x. So a next step, maybe not yours. Maybe you guys see the answer and you can jump ahead. That's cool. But distribute this through. That should be minus 3x squared plus 9x over this mess, x plus 5 x minus three. And I avoided most of the glare. Okay. So final answer. Okay, I gotta erase this. We'll come over here. Final answer, we bring it back up here. X squared minus three x squared is minus two x squared. Seven x plus 9x is 16x, 10, nothing, 10 plus 10, all over x plus 5, x minus 3. And that would be your final answer. Okay. I completely accept, completely accept that some people could actually skip from this step here to the answer. Why? Because if you think of this minus sign going through everything, you have x squared minus 3x squared, negative 2x squared. You have 7x, watch carefully, 7x minus a minus nine. Well, what happens to minus minus becomes a plus. So seven X minus minus nine is the same as seven X plus nine, which is how I got 16 X. So I completely accept that once you're at this step, you could jump to this answer. Okay, but you're bypassing these, but you're having to think about them. You're doing these, you're just doing them quickly and in your head. All right, questions on that problem. Okay, so. Well, what can we do to make it worse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we got it. I need to erase the board to make room. Uh, anybody still copying this? I'm good. We're all good? OK. OK. Way back when we introduced fractions, we talked about something called You've got to find the lowest common denominator, okay? So like if you had three, now let's say we were asking you to do five, six added with three fourths, okay? We forced you when you were first learning this to find a common denominator, the lowest common denominator. And because we did that, we screwed up every student in the world. Okay, the key is just find a common denominator, not the lowest. But we forced you guys into finding 12 because that was the smallest number that four and six both go into. Now, there's a reason for that. Okay, because this avoids you're having to reduce your answer, probably. 
it works with smaller numbers. So the smaller the denominator, as long as it's in common, okay, the smaller your numbers are, the less likely you're going to make the mistake. There's a lot of reasons why we did that. But we never, ever should have forced you, ever should have forced you into always finding the lowest common denominator. There's no reason to. No. Okay. So now, having said that, okay, what if I gave you this problem? Five over x squared plus x plus seven over x squared minus one. Now watch carefully. I could, if I wanted to, multiply this fraction by x squared minus one, top and bottom, and multiply this fraction by x squared plus x, top and bottom. And if I did that, it wouldn't be wrong, but it would be a big giant mess that you would have no possibility of reducing. It would be so ugly, so messy, you couldn't reduce it. So what we do when we see it is we factor the denominator. So this becomes five times, if we factor an X out of the denominator, five over, okay? These two are the same, plus seven X minus one X plus one, because this is a dose problem. Well, now what's really cool about this is we can look at this and say, hey, you know what? These two denominators weren't totally different. They had something in common. They both had an X plus one. So I only need to multiply this fraction by an X minus one. And you can't read my handwriting, but because that's the only thing that the first fraction was lacking to make it the same as this. What's this fraction lacking? X. What's it? An X. So you multiply top and bottom by an X. So the moral of the story here is you don't just automatically use that other denominator. You don't just automatically say, oh, x squared minus one, x squared minus one on this one, and whatever on this one, because that will get you a really messy, ugly problem that would be almost impossible for you to reduce. So instead, we try to factor the denominators, okay? And we compare and contrast, just like in English class, compare and contrast. How are they similar? How are they different? Make them the same. Remember, that's the overall rule in math. Make the denominators the same. This needed an X minus one, this needed an X. All right, we're gonna put everybody and their mother back together. This becomes five X minus five over this mess. Aren't you glad we're not making you multiply denominators back together? Plus 7x over the same mess. Notice tradition says the monomial x always goes in front. Okay. Example, suppose you had x plus 2 times 3 times x minus 5. If we're going to leave it in factored form, we always put the single thing in front, 3 times x plus 2, x minus 5. And that's just simply tradition. And there's some higher level math in that, but don't worry about it. Okay. So the monomial factor 
goes in front. The X, even though we shoved it at the end, when we rewrite it, it goes in front. All right, like terms, what do I got? 12X minus five over this mess, X, X minus one, X plus one. That is my answer. I don't believe it reduces. I'm not going to worry about it. So the moral of the story is if you recognize that your, your denominators factor, you should factor them to be able to compare and contrast and then force them to be the same. Force the missing factors to top and bottom. Okay, I got a couple more, but how are we doing? So I want to see if you can finish. Pardon me? All right, All right. let's try. Let's try this. You guys try this one. See how far you get. Um, two over x squared minus x minus 12 plus three over x squared minus 16. Two over x squared minus x minus 12 plus three over x squared minus 16. The pause, give you about three minutes to do that. So again, for the recording, I factored the denominator here x squared minus x minus 12 became these this uh, set of factors x squared minus 16 became these two so then i compare and contrast i'm going you this one's missing an x plus four okay top and bottom and this one's missing an x plus three top and bottom Three, come on, right. So we multiply this out. This becomes 2x plus 8 over this ugly mess x minus 4, x plus 3, x plus 4, plus this becomes 3x plus 9 on top, the same nonsense on bottom. Remember, when you're multiplying, the order that you put them in doesn't matter. Remember, 2 times 7 times 5 is the same as 5 times 2 times 7. The fact that you have these factors in different order on the denominator doesn't mean anything. The, if you multiplied them all out, they would all be the same. This would be the same because they have the same factors. They're the same thing, okay? All right. Uh, so we have add like terms. We have 5x plus 17 on top, and we have this ugly thing on bottom, x minus 4, x plus 3, x plus 4. And that would be your answer. And again, it shouldn't matter just because I put these down in the denominator in this order. Uh, it shouldn't matter at all. It doesn't matter to me, okay, what, what order you put them in. But for God's sakes, don't try to multiply them out. It's just not worth it. Okay, I want to move on to one more um, addition, subtraction type of problem and then move on to the hardest topic of the night. Yo. Okay. So again, what was the moral of these problems? Don't just automatically multiply by the other denominator. Don't do that just because, okay? Try to factor the denominators 
So you can study them, compare and contrast. What, how are they similar? How are they different? Force them to be the same. That's the overriding, overarching idea when you add or subtract fractions. Force the denominators to be the same. Okay, so here we go. I got to erase. Okay. Um, this is more addition and subtraction. I, I'm, I'm still working on addition and subtraction, but I'm trying to set you up with this example. Suppose you had three over five minus X. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, except people don't like five minus X. We prefer X minus five. Don't ask me why. It's just, it's just an idiosyncrasy. So I want to show you something. What if you multiplied the bottom by negative one? and the top by negative one. First, that's legit math. As long as you multiply top and bottom by the same number, you're okay. Because you're changing its form, but not its value. All right. The numerator is negative three now. Okay. The denominator if we distribute the negative one becomes negative five plus X. Think about that. If you distribute the negative one through the denominator, negative one times five is negative five. Negative one times negative X, negative times negative is positive. Now, because that's an addition problem, I can turn it around. This is negative three over X minus five. Okay. Looks nicer to me. Well, that's just because I'm weird. But that is a really important concept that when you multiply, <coughs> excuse me, a subtraction binomial, by a negative one. Ultimately, after several steps, it turns it around. Okay, remember what I said. I didn't like that. I don't like the five in front. Okay, for some reason it bothers me. So when I multiply by negative one, okay, and all my steps, eventually the five minus x became x minus five. But what else happened? The three became negative. Now we're gonna use that in the next couple of examples. But if it's just the numerator, then we don't have to do the denominator, right? <coughs> right, excuse me, shoot. Yes, you're correct. So let's take an easy example. Let's say five over X minus two plus seven over two minus X. Okay, on the surface, on the surface, those are not the same denominator. They are not, okay? I could use this technique where you multiply by somebody. I could multiply by the other denominator, but I could also recognize that, hey, wait a minute, those two are really similar to each other. They're not the same. They're like brother and sister, almost the same. So I could multiply those two by negative one top and bottom. What that's going to leave me is five over X minus two plus negative seven 
what did I show you in the example that I just stupidly erased? What happens if you take this two minus X and multiply it by negative one? Ultimately, what does it become? X plus two? No. Negative two minus X? Which is, or, no, okay. Well, hold on. X minus two. <laughs> yeah, uh, X minus two. Uh, we got some issues here. I heard too many wrong answers. Two minus X times negative one. So you distribute the negative one, so you get negative two. Distribute it here plus X. But the plus sign allows us to turn this around to be X minus two. It still is a minus problem. It still is a minus. It changed it from a minus to a minus. That's okay. But what happened is the two numbers got reversed. Okay, by multiplying by negative one, it's going to stay a minus problem. But the two numbers, the two minus x and the x minus two, will get reversed. Okay. So why am I making a big deal about this? Because with this simple trick of multiplying top and bottom by negative one, turning this one over, hey, look, the denominators are the same. So add the tops, five plus negative seven, keep the bottom, final answer, negative two over X minus two. We'll do one more. But I have a question for you guys. Can these negative twos cancel? No. Good, no. Because this is actually a quantity. Remember those invisible parentheses I was talking about last night? That's a quantity X minus two. So if you want to cancel the X minus two, it's got to be with another X minus two somewhere. But there's none in this problem. Okay, so that's a quantity. All right, you guys try this one. No, I don't want to be that tricky. I'm sorry. That's way too tricky. That's a little bit less tricky. So go ahead and add these two together. Three over four X minus 12 added with two over nine minus X squared. It's, it's got some twists in there. Just a quick question. Couldn't you yeah. um, swap those before you factor them? You mean nine four? minus X squared? Sure. You want to do that? That would probably, if you see, a little easier. Yeah, it would. Um, in the end, it wouldn't do any difference. But you're right. If you see that this is turned backwards from the way you normally see it. Okay. Am I recording? Yeah. Okay then you could instantly multiply top and bottom by negative one, and that would turn that one around to a more normal looking problem. We, the way I was setting this up, it would do the same thing. Um, 
but I'm going to go with this because you're right. It actually is easier. So by doing that step, by multiplying top and bottom of that, we're going to get 3 over 4x minus 12 plus negative 2 over the moral of the example over here is that multiplying by negative 1 turns this around to become x squared minus 9. That's what I was trying to get at. When you multiply a binomial by negative 1 like that, after all the steps and all the other BS, it just simply turns it around instead of 2 minus x, it becomes x minus 2. So multiply this top and bottom by negative 1. Instead of 9 minus x squared, it becomes x squared minus 9. But the numerator is negative. All right, so now we factor. 3 over 4 times x minus 3 plus negative 2 over x minus 3, x plus 3. Oops. So that's, this was factor what they have in common before. This was dose factoring. Professor. Yeah. On the upper one, wouldn't it still be the same uh, factors, x minus 3 and x plus 3? No. You mean if we didn't use the negative 1 trick? Yes. OK, no, it wouldn't. It, OK, suppose we had 2 over 9 minus x squared. That would be 2 over, that would factor as 3 minus x and 3 plus x. Notice the 3 minus x is backwards. 3 minus x, x minus 3. We'd still have to turn it around. We still have to flip it with a negative 1 trick. Got it. OK. All right. So if it, the point of both Richard's and, and Mitch's question is, eventually, you're going to have to use this negative 1 trick to turn this around. The question is, do I want to do it at the beginning, or do I want to do it later on in the problem? In the end, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like, what do you see? What seems best for you? But you are going to want to use the negative 1 trick. So let's go. How about the second fraction? What's it now missing? Now that I've flipped everybody around, what's the second fraction need? Quattro. OK. Quattro equis? Yeah, quattro. Four and four. OK, quattro for you. Uh, <laughs> That's good to say bilingual or pseudo bilingual gringos. Quattro, yeah, okay, that sounds good to me. What's the first fraction missing? Go ahead and say that in Spanish. Okay. Huh? X plus X, X, how do you say that in Spanish? X más tres, I think. <laughs> okay, X más tres, okay. Yeah. Correct. Well, I was just trying to go with what you said. I mean, you're giving me your Spanish cuatro, okay? So I'm going to try and go X plus three. So put this all together. We have three X plus nine over this mess, four times X minus three times X plus three, plus negative eight over the same mess, put the four in front, X minus three, X plus three, Okay, how am I? I'm partially in the glare. Add everybody and their mother together who can add. Final answer 3x plus 1 on top. Keep the bottom 4 times x minus 3, x plus 3 on bottom. And it still is on my screen. Yay, that's it. Okay, so with those examples tonight, you should be able to do 99% of whatever mom has in chapter 8.3. Okay, and 8.4, I'm sorry. 8.3 and 
those that's all adding and subtracting fractions, some with common denominators, some without. Okay. <clears throat> um, because I babbled too much at the beginning, talking about trigonometry and showing you those things, which I think was important, but I spent too much time on. Um, we're not going to be able to get through everything I wanted to get through tonight. So do your very best to be here tomorrow night. I'm, I'm not quitting. I'm going to get started. Okay. But we're just not going to be able to complete it all tonight. I'm going to jump right now to section 8.6, which is in a lot of ways, the most important section of this chapter. Okay. Chapter 8.6, we want to solve rational equations. Now, go back and think for just a moment all we've been doing to this point, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been taking a fraction and trying to reduce it. Taking a fraction and trying to multiply it or divide it with another fraction. Taking um, a couple fractions and trying to add them together or subtract them together. All we've been doing is arithmetic of fractions. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, reduce. Now we're totally changing gears. We want to solve rational equations. Okay, the word rational still means fraction. So I'm gonna go back to chapter, was it one or two? Two thirds X plus one fourth, um, equals one sixth x. Now, two thirds x plus one fourth equals one sixth x. Okay. Um, I need to do this problem. When I first introduced this way back in chapter one or two or whenever, I said, look, I don't care how you do it. Um, get the answer but I tried to get you to use LCDs, okay? Now I'm gonna force you to use an LCD. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So in this problem, the LCD, the lowest or least common denominator is in this case, 12. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question in a kind of backwards way. Why did I pick 12? Why was 12 so important to this poll? Because all the denominators all the, go by 12, right? They all go into 12. They go into 12, yeah. Okay, they all go into 12. And if they all go into 12, what happens when I distribute the 12 here, here, and here? What happens to the denominators? They disappear. Okay. Okay, they disappear, they go away. That's so important, guys. The whole purpose of this LCD 12 was to make the denominators go away. It screwed up the numerators. It made the numerators bigger, but it made the denominators go away. That, that is critically important that you accept that. The whole reason for that was to make the denominators eventually cancel out, go away, disappear. So having kind of talked about that, let's take a new problem. Let's take one minus four over X equals 12 over X squared. I want 
to multiply by some LCD. Okay. But the key is if its purpose is to cancel out all of the denominators. Okay. So can you think of something that I could put up here? And by the way, one has a one denominator and we don't worry about it. Can you think of something I could put up here? So when I distribute it to here and here and here, it would cancel all of the denominators. One squared. Okay. I heard two things. Say again. I think it was x squared. I, I heard two things, but I heard the x squared. If you multiply by x squared, so if you distribute x squared times the one, okay, that's fine, nobody cancels. But if you distribute it here, minus, if you distribute x squared times four over x, you're distributing the LCD to here, and then to here, n equals x squared times 12 over x squared, and to here. Okay. Look what happens. These two partially cancel. So this becomes x squared minus 4x, because this x on bottom canceled with one of the x's on top. So that's how I got 4x equals, okay, the x squares totally cancel out and I get 12. Yes or no? Yes. Do you keep going? Oh, yeah, we're going to keep going. But I, if you don't get it to here, then uh, anything else I do, do would be lost. You're not done because to solve means to get x by itself. We're just sort of, getting the problem in a form that helps me. All right, so right now I'm looking at this going, uh-oh, okay, x squared. That means I must make it equal zero. Remember that rule, x squared minus four x minus 12 equals zero. That was the first rule to solve a power equation, make it equal zero. Okay, I still have room. Trust me. Okay, this factors as x minus six, x plus two equals zero. Okay, I'm running out of room, so I'm doing the factoring again. You go to your scratch paper. I didn't mean running out of room, I meant running out of time. You go to your scratch paper. You use the AC method, you try and factor this, it will come out to be x minus six, x plus two. You split it, x minus six equals zero, or x plus two equals zero. Solve each one, x is six, x is negative two. And this, this is where you put them in the solution set because these are what x must be to make the problem true. These are not restrictions, okay? So what we do? We sat and thought for a couple seconds. We said, what thing can I pull out of thin air that will cancel this x squared and this? And well, in this case, there's nothing there to cancel. So it's got to cancel everybody all at one big step. So you get x squared, because you know x squared will cancel x squared. You know, x squared will cancel mostly with the x. Okay, so that's, you pull it out of thin air, you multiply, distribute, cancel, and then resolve the problem. Okay. Let's try this problem. W over five minus W plus three over W equals negative three over W. 
Okay. There's a couple of ways this can be done, um, but I want to stick with this. I want to walk you through this, guys. Again, I've got my eye on the time. Um, I want to make sure we get this. What LCD do I pull out of thin air? Okay. Will cancel all of the denominators. What does it take to cancel a W? A W. Okay. So my LCD must have a W in it because that'll cancel that and that. Ah, what's it take to cancel a five? A five. So my LCD is actually going to be five W. Okay. And all I did was say, what does, what do I want or what do I need to cancel each piece of the denominators? Now we're going to distribute the five W. So if I do that, I have five W distributed here times W over five minus, I have five W times W plus three over W equals distributed here. I have five W times negative three over W. Okay, and I avoided the glare again. All right, so are you guys okay with 5W being my LCD? Do you understand? Do you accept that? Okay, yes. do you accept that I've distributed 5W to each term? Okay, that's our basic algebra technique, distribute the LCD to each term. All right, here comes the fun. In this first expression, who cancels? Fives. The, the fives. fives. So who's left? W times w. W. So w squared. W, w, W squared. Minus. <clears throat> All right. In this expression, who cancels? W. The Ws. So who's left? Five and five W and Five times W, times plus, w plus three. Yeah. Um, suggestion, don't do too much in your head. Just who cancels Ws? Who's left? The five, the red five, and the black W plus three. Just, just write those. You'll be safer. Over here, who cancels? The Ws. The Ws. Who's left? The five and the negative three. Okay, so put all this together. Uh, look at this, this is a negative five. When you distribute the negative five, remember the negative goes with it. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna get W squared minus five W Minus 15. You guys okay with distributing the negative five into that? Equals negative 15. Is that okay with everybody or not? W squared, distribute the five, the negative five into that mess. And so we got that up here. Multiply those two together. And I get this. Okay. It's a power equation. Again, I need to make it equal zero. So if I add 15 to both sides, okay, I end up with W squared minus 5W equals zero. Okay, now 
It equals zero, so I think, okay, I have to factor it. Ah, it's got a W I can take out. W, that leaves W minus five equals zero. Okay, separate W equals zero or W minus five equals zero. So, excuse me, W equals five. Okay. Those are my solutions. Now, before you tune me out, that's wrong. Okay, I've made no mistakes, but my answer is wrong. Okay. B not equal zero. Why? You're right. Why? I don't know that part. Because <laughs> it's at the want, bottom. I, I don't like zero, so I'm just going to throw it out. Fine. Okay. I mean, I get it. I just, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Somebody said something. I. Because it's on the bottom and it can't be on the bottom because the pizza. P oh, geez. Okay. That's the thing you remember? Pizza can't be zero? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, oh my God. Okay. It's in my notes. I warped and perverted everybody. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. You're both right. This, before you put it in solution, okay, you must ask, okay, this is rejected and you're, you're correct because that, because if you put zero into the original problem, what would this denominator be worth? Zero. And you can't ever have a zero in the denominator of a fraction. So even though your algebra, <coughs> excuse me, led you to two answers, okay, one of these answers was rejected because when you checked in the original, it caused the denominator to be zero and that can't ever happen. So we threw out the zero, just throw it out, it's gone. And then we say the only solution that is correct for this problem is five because we rejected the zero. Okay, so Lindsay and Vince both, both got it for different reasons and I'm sure there's other people, but questions on that. Okay, um, do I wanna do one more? Boom, 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 boom. No, I'll save some for tomorrow night. Um, what do I have to do? Finish this off tomorrow night. Maybe that, maybe that. Okay. All right. So we're going to come back and hit some more of these tomorrow night with practice, but that ought to help you get started on 8.6 you've got there. Notice we skipped a lot. We went 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. And then we skipped to 8.6 at, at least to start. So if you're getting into mom, um, be careful which ones you try because I've skipped over some, which I will cover tomorrow night. And so with that, I'm done, guys. Have a good night. See you tomorrow night. Bye bye. Thank you, Thanks, right. Professor. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. Yeah, hi, Ma Maurice. How are you doing on your work? Are you going to be able to catch up? Hey, me and your mom. Stop a big bit. Excuse me, I don't understand. Oh, how are you doing on your chapter seven? Are you going to be able to catch up? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, thank uh, you. You can email me if you have questions. I will try and help. Okay. okay. Also, do you, do you have a um, can you do text messaging on your cell phone? Do you know yeah. how to take? Okay. Then Ann is our tutor and she answers uh, Remind. If you go to Canvas and look at her, her um, module, she has a Remind um, address there, an app for Remind, and she can also help you. So if you can't get me, she can help you, okay? 
Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. See you later. Um, and I'll talk with you about that a little bit later. Uh, where was I? Oh, I got to stop. Boom. Boom. Yes, I do.